So Dragon's Dogma 2 just came out, and basically as soon as the game went live on Steam, I smacked that download button, booted it up, and I played it basically all night long. I streamed my first few hours with it, streamed the next day as well, and I've had a great time with the game so far. But imagine my surprise when I woke up the next day, and despite getting glowing reviews from nearly every outlet and just having a blast with it overnight, that it had somehow launched to a mostly negative review score on Steam. And I'm just like, like, there are some legitimate criticisms about the game, sure. Like, yeah, the performance isn't great, but it's mostly only a problem in towns. Like, once you get out of a town, it's all fine. I haven't upgraded a part in my computer since 2018. So, it's it really isn't that bad, unless you're trying to, like, blast it at 4K on ultra settings or something. And there, there are some, like, weird things with the save files, how, like, there's really no justifiable reason for the game to only have one save file, and you can't have multiple characters. Like, I understand not wanting to allow save scumming, like, basically every FromSoft game does that, but, like, games like Elden Ring still let you have multiple different characters on a single account, whereas this game, for some reason, just doesn't. And that's kind of unacceptable. They really need to add in, like, multiple save profiles. Even if it's just limited to, like, three, that's fine. But neither, neither of those complaints can easily justify the mostly negative review score on Steam. So what's going on? Well, I mean, as you've probably been made aware by now, it's our usual culprit of last-minute microtransaction additions. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's really annoying when games do this, and it's easily one of my most hated trends in gaming, right up there with, like, loot boxes and all that kind of garbage. And yeah, they basically added a microtransaction shop where you can buy basic in-game items. It's essentially cheat codes for sale. That's what this is. Like, oh, you're out of waystones? Like, oh, then get some extra lives and extra waystones by... Throwing in your credit card, it, it's nonsense. But, there is some misconceptions about this that I do want to clear up, which is that th these microtransactions are in no way, like, forced upon you in the actual game itself. I, I think it's very clear that this game was designed without any of these kinds of microtransactions in mind. The game, yes, does not allow you to fast travel very easily, but the game is based around exploring the world and getting into regular fights. If you buy a bunch of fast travel rocks in the microtransaction store and then use them constantly, then you're robbing yourself of the core experience the game was designed around. Also, some people think that there are things that are exclusive in the shop, like uh, the character edit vouchers that let you essentially rebuild your character from scratch. and. You can do that in-game. There are there are little books you can buy that are like tomes of reconfiguration or whatever they're called that let you rebuild your character from scratch entirely with in-game resources that aren't even that hard to accrue. Plus there's like barber shops and stuff in-game that even do things that you can't actually do in the character creator. So I think you actually have more options going through the in-game like character rebuilders than you do by going with your credit card. Like, it's kind of funny. But yeah, like, ultimately, there's nothing in the stop that, like, is for... Like, the game isn't artificially slowing down your XP progression, like how Assassin's Creed Odyssey did, and then selling you XP boosters in the store. It's nowhere near as bad as that. And if all you want to do is just play Dragon's Dogma 2 and have fun with it, you probably won't even remember that there is a store once you get a few hours into the game. However, I do think that everyone is kind of justified in throwing an outrage over this, because frankly we should have been getting more mad about this years ago. The truth of the matter is that Capcom has been doing this for years, and it's kind of been really frustrating. Thankfully, most of the time it's done in a way that is very similar to how it's done in Dragon's Dogma here, where it's very unobtrusive, the, the game isn't shoveling its storefront in your face every five minutes, it's not artificially slowing down your progression just so that it can sell you a way to speed it back up, but at the same time, just because it's inoffensive doesn't mean that we should be okay with it. Like, Devil May Cry 5 
also had this, as did the Resident Evil 4 remake, and that was nominated for Game of the Year at most publications. Like, a lot of people don't even realize that those games had microtransactions in them due to how innocuous they are. But they're still kind of bullshit. Like, in Devil May Cry 5, you can buy red orbs, which are the currency for, like, unlocking new moves and taunts and whatnot. And, like, why? <laughs> like, not only is there an item in the game, Dr. Faust, to be specific, that lets you farm red orbs at an absurd rate, but... It's a single-player game! Like, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, after I beat Devil May Cry 5, I, w I went in and edited my save file to give myself 99 million red orbs, just kind of as a middle finger to the whole microtransaction thing. And there's literally nothing the game could do about that, because it's, it's a single-player game! Like, you can play it offline! The idea of trying to sell a cheat code in that kind of game is... Uh, it's horse armor. This is what people were mad about when horse armor came out. Like, to go on just a small tangent for a second, like, people talk about horse armor almost nostalgically, talking about, like, a simpler time back when the idea of selling a, you know, microtransaction for a cosmetic DLC was this atrocious thing, and then you look at games like Overwatch or any kind of multiplayer game under the sun where you can buy a skin for $5 and go, man, wh why aren't we mad about this anymore? And th there is the thing called context. You see, in a truly multiplayer game, like hell, Monster Hunter also has a ton of these bad microtransactions, but it's at least a multiplayer game that, yes, you can play single player and offline, but there's a heavy co-op component to it where you can buy skins and help keep servers alive and, you know, show it off to your friends and stuff like that. So it's at least a little bit more excusable there, and especially in the much more multiplayer focused games like I don't know, like Call of Duty or Overwatch or whatever. Now, the way that they sell those is one thing, but that's a whole other topic. The problem with horse armor back in the day is that that was a microtransaction in Oblivion. A fully single-player RPG with zero online components. That's what makes horse armor so astonishing back then and even today. And that's what is going on with Capcom these last few years. Things like selling red orbs in Devil May Cry 5 and whatever the nonsense you could buy in Resident Evil 4 is and all of these items in Dragon's Dogma 2 is the exact same as horse armor in Oblivion. It's pointless microtransactions in a single player focused game and we shouldn't be okay with that. So frankly, even though there is a lot of misinformation going around about how the microtransactions in Dragon's Dogma work, at the end of the day, I'm kind of happy that people are getting mad about this because we really should have been getting mad about this a while ago. And I'm kind of wanting Capcom to have a fire lit under their ass to finally stop doing this asinine practice. Yes, is it not as bad as it could have been? Of course, and I'm very glad that these games are clearly being designed without these microtransactions in mind. But that still doesn't mean that we should be tolerating this, and honestly, I'm fine with people expressing this opinion through this review bomb to try and finally get Capcom to stop doing it. <sighs> but yeah, honestly, I mostly just wanted to make a quick video to throw my two cents onto the fire. So, I mean, by all means, if you think Dragon's Dogma is your kind of game, I think that you should play it, and it's great, and you can have a fun time with it, and also complain to Capcom about these nonsense business practices that they've been partaking in over the last few years. You can do both of these things. And by all means, also complain about some of the actual issues with the game itself, like some of the performance bugs, as well as the whole save file debacle. But yeah, by all means, light a fire under Capcom's ass. I want them to stop doing this bullshit. Just let the game be good on its own merits. Do not fill it with all these goddamn microtransactions. Just, just get rid of it. It's a full price game. Stop. <laughs> Just stop it! Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.